Virginia Vallejo. This video compresses information gathered from Wikipedia in video format. Studies prove that reading while listening improves comprehension, increases speed as well as expands vocabulary and enhances fluency. Video sections. Abstract. Early life. Career in the media. Exile and asylum in the U.S. Testimonies. Portrayals. External links. Give your feedback on the comments section. Support the channel by subscribing and liking the video. Thanks. Abstract. Virginia Vallejo Garca, born the 26th of August 1949, is a Colombian author, journalist, television director, anchorwoman, media personality, socialite, and political asylee in the United States of America. On the 18th of July 2006, the D took her out of Colombia in a special flight to save her life and cooperate with the Department of Justice in high-profile cases. After she had publicly signaled several Colombian presidents and politicians of being beneficiaries or accomplices of the leading cocaine cartels, in 2007, she published her first book, Loving Pablo, Hating Escobar, which led the Colombian justice system to reopen the cases of the Palace of Justice siege, 1985, and the assassination of the presidential candidate Luis Carlos Galn. 1989. The book was translated to 15 languages and made into a movie in 2018. Vallejo currently resides in Miami, Florida. In 2019, she began working for the international channel Actualidad RT. Early life. Virginia Vallejo was born on 26 August 1949 in Cartago, Val del Cauca, Colombia near her family's ranch. Her parents were Juan Vallejo Jaramillo, an entrepreneur, and Mary Garca Rivera. Her paternal grandmother, Sofa Jaramillo Arango, was a descendant of Alonso Jaramillo de Andrade C. Espedes y Guzman, a nobleman from Extremadura, Spain. Several members of her family were ministers, writers and ambassadors, such as her paternal grandfather Eduardo Vallejo Varela, Minister of Economy. 1930, his great-uncle Alejandro Vallejo Varela, writer and close friend of Jorge Ellis Agaton, and his great-uncle Jamie Jaramillo Arango, Minister of Education, 1934, ambassador to several countries in Europe, and co-founder of the Anglo-Colombian School. In 1950, the young family returned to Bogot, where her siblings, Felipe, 1951, Antonio, 19,552,012, and Sofa, 1957, were born. She studied first in the kindergarten of Elvira Leris Restrepo, sister of President Carlos Leris Restrepo, a friend of her family. She then attended the Anglo-Colombian school. In 1967 and 1968, she worked as an English teacher in the Centro Colombo Americano in Bogotind. In 1969, in the presidency of Banco del Comercio, the same year, she married Fernando Borrero Caicedo, CEO of Borrero, Zamorano and Giovanelli, but they were divorced in 1971. In 1972, while she was working as director of public relations of Cerveza Andina, she received an invitation to join an upcoming television program directed by Carlos Lemos Simmons and Anne Bulfern de Soto. In 1978, she married David Civil, the Argentinian television, theatre and film director, and head of the clan Civil. The marriage ended in 1981. Career in the media Until 1998, there were only three television channels in Colombia that belonged to the government. Two commercial and one official. In Raverson, the official broadcasting entity, Leased spaces to independent television producers known as programmadores, many owned by prominent journalists or presidential families. This was the reason why Vallejo could work simultaneously as a news anchor and presenter of other programs. From 1972 to 1975, she was as the presenter of Ega Colombia, Revista del Cibado, quote, 
a program directed by Carlos Lemos Simmons and Fernde de Soto. From 1973 to 1975, she was the host of the television musical shows Exitos 73, Exitos 74, and Exitos 75, produced by THOY, a programmador of the family of President Julio Cesar Turbe. In 1973, she began working as a reporter on TV Suchesos A3, the newscast directed by Alberto Acosta, and, from 1975 to 1977, she became the international editor. In the early and mid-70s, she hosted other television programs, like the quiz show TV Crucigrama, a cooking show with Chef Segundo Cabezas, and a program for children. In January 1978, she became the anchor woman of Noticiero 24 Horas, which aired at 7 p.m., and was directed by Mauricio Mez and Sergio Arboleda. In March, the government of Taiwan invited her to the inauguration of President Chang Ching Kuo. The same year, she was elected as the vice president of the board of directors of the ACL, Asociación Colombiana de Locutors, Association of Colombian Speakers, in 1978, 1979 and 1980. She won the award as the best television anchor of the ape. Asociación de Periodistas del Espectáculo, Association of Entertainment Journalists. In 1979, she co-starred in the movie Columbia Connection by Gustavo Nieto Roa. In November, she appeared in Town and Country, opening the section The Beautiful Women of El Dorado. In 1979 and 1980, she presented Cuidado con las Mujeres, a program by RTI Producciones, directed by David Stivell. In 1981, she founded her own program Adora TV Impacto, with the journalist Margot Ritchie. That same year, the government of Israel invited them to do a special program about the Holy Land. In 1980 and 1982, she worked at Caracol Radio. She was the only journalist sent by a Colombian media outlet to London to cover the wedding of the Prince of Wales and Lady Diana Spencer on 29 July 1981. Vallejo's broadcast for Caracol lasted three hours. She covered the Miss Columbia pageant for the same station until 1985. Between 1981 and 1983, she directed her program Alatarque. She was the first television journalist to interview Pablo Escobar in January 1983. The interview was filmed at the garbage dump of Medellin. During the interview Pablo Escobar described the charity project Medellin Sintagurios. Medellin Without Slums, launched by Escobar and his partners. The interview propelled Escobar onto the national stage. In 1983 and 1984, she presented Hoy Por Hoy. Magazine del Lunes, Magazine Today, Monday, at 7 p.m. Monsieur in 1984. She made a television commercial for Medias di Lido, Pantyhose, in Venice, Italy, followed by another three in Rio de Janeiro, San Juan and Cartagena. In 1983 and 1984, she presented the musical El Show de las Estrellas, directed by Jorge Barn, in 1984. She became the international editor of the Grupo Radio Colombiano, directed by Carlos Lemos Simmons. In 1985, she became the anchorwoman of the newscast Telediario, directed by Arturo Abella. In 1985, she appeared on the covers of Bazaar and Cosmopolitan. Also, in Elenco, a magazine of El Tiempo that presented her as the symbol of an era. In 1988, she won a scholarship from the German government, and she studied economic journalism in Berlin at the Internationals Institute FR Journalismus. In 1991, she returned to Colombia to co-star in the soap opera Sombra de Tu Sombra of Caracol Televisión. In 1992, she presented Indiscreet Samo, directed by Manuel Prado, from 1992 to 1994. She worked at Toddler Radio. In October 1994, she ended her career in the Colombian media in order to open the South American operation of a multi-level company based in the United States.
Between 2009 and 2010, she worked as a columnist for the Venezuelan newspaper Six de Poda, directed by the opposition journalist Leo Sinas Garca. But, President Hugo Chavez closed the newspaper and jailed the director. In 2019, Virginia Vallejo began working for RT and Espil or RT Actualidad. The episodes, Sueos y Pesadillas, Dreams and Nightmares, are inspired by the American Dream, and describe leading problems of the United States of America, especially in Latino communities, like the impressive gap between the wealthiest, the middle class and the poor, illegal immigration, discrimination of gender, human trafficking, the epidemic of drug addiction, and the high costs of health, among many others. Exile and Asylum in the U.S. In early July 2006, Vallejo offered her testimony in the case against Alberto Santafemio, a former justice minister and associate of Pablo Escobar, head of the Medellin cartel and her lover from 1983 to 1987. The politician was on trial for conspiracy in the assassination of Luis Carlos Galn, a presidential candidate killed by Pablo Escobar on 18 August 1989. The following week, the prosecutor Edgardo Josmaya Villazón closed the case for lack of evidence. All of Escobar's hit men in the crime and several key witnesses against Santa Femio had been killed. So Vallejo contacted the American embassy in Bogot and asked the U.S. government to help save her life in exchange for information on the associates of Pablo Escobar and brothers Gilberto and Miguel Rodriguez Orijuela of the Cali cartel. Pablo Escobar's nemesis, the brothers had been extradited by President Lvaro Uribe, and the trial was due to begin in Miami in a few weeks. Vallejo's flight made news worldwide, and a home video that Vallejo had taped before her departure to protect her life was aired by Canal RCN of Colombia. According to the channel, it was watched by 14 million people, with higher rates of audience than the Football World Cup final in 2006 on the 9th of June. Six weeks later, Miguel and Gilberto Rodriguez Orijuela pleaded guilty. They were sentenced to 30 years in prison, and the United States Department of Justice collected $2.1 billion, $2.7 billion today, in assets without going to trial. In 2007, Vallejo published Amando a Pablo, Odiando a Escobar, in English, Loving Pablo, Hating Escobar, in which she describes, among other topics, her romantic relationship with Pablo Escobar head of the Medellin cartel, from 1982 to 1987, the origins of the rebel organizations in Colombia, the reasons for the explosive growth of the cocaine industry, the birth of Mars, Merceus Accustradors, which in English means death to kidnappers, the extraditables, and the United Self-Defense Forces of Colombia, the links among the Medellin and Cali cartels, Caribbean dictators, and the Colombian presidents Alfonso L.P.Z. Mitchelson, Ernesto Sampa, and Lvaro Uribe, the siege of the Palace of Justice in 1985, Escobar's relationship with the extreme left and extreme right rebel groups, the horrors during the era of narco-terrorism from 19,881,993, and the hunt for and death of her former lover on 2 December 1993. Vallejo's memoir became the number one best-selling Spanish-language book in both Colombia and the United States. Upon arriving to the United States in 2006, Vallejo requested political asylum as year she knew that if returned to Colombia, she would be killed, like several witnesses in the cases versus Alberto, Santa Femio and the bosses of the Cali cartel, to grant her political asylum. The State of Department and the Immigration Court of Miami examined Vallejo's life and could not find any investigation against her. Only hundreds of threats from members of the Colombian government, media outlets owned or directed by the family of Vice President Francisco Santos Calderon and Defense Minister Juan Manuel Santos, and the paramilitary squad Squilas Negras, the Black Eagles, 
On May 3, 2010, the United States of America granted Virginia Vallejo political asylum under the United Nations Convention Against Torture. She received it due to her political opinion about powerful politicians, her testimony in high-profile criminal cases, a brutal car crash she had suffered on her way to testify in the Colombian Miami Consulate, and thousands of threats against her life and integrity posted under her name in the Internet, though most of them were withdrawn from the search engines in the following two weeks. They remain in Vallejo's case in the Miami Immigration Court. Testimonies In July 2008, the Colombian government ordered Virginia Vallejo to testify in the reopened case of the Palace of Justice Siege, a massacre that cost the lives of more than 100 people, including 11 Supreme Court justices, rebels of the M-19, government agents, and dozens of unarmed civilians. In the Colombian consulate in Miami, a prosecutor sent by the Colombian Attorney General asked the author to confirm the events described in her memoir, in the chapter, That Palace in Flames, Akel Palacio en Llamas. So, during the next five hours, she explained the roles of all the actors involved in the tragedy. Though the M-19 and the Medellin cartel were responsible for the siege, the military were responsible for the massacre. The journalist signaled also the lack of action of President Belisario Betancur. The rebel commanders of the M-19 took the justices as hostages in order to force the government to listen to their claims including the elimination of the extradition treaty with the United States. But, President Betancur refused to take the calls of the President of the Supreme Court, Magistrate Alfonso Reyes each and year, pleading to save their lives, and instead he allowed the army and the police to bomb a building with 400 people inside. In her testimony under oath, she described what Pablo Escobar had told her the following year. After ten months of separation, the people detained after the fire, many with third-degree burns, were sent to military garrisons where they were tortured and the women gang raped to find their hiding places of other rebel commanders, and the money that I had paid them to steal my files before the court ruled on our extradition. Later, they were killed and disappeared in cans of quicklime and sulfuric acid. At the end of that chapter, Virginia Vallejo summarized the tragic events. That conflagration was the holocaust of the Colombian justice system, with the triumph of the establishment, the traditional parties, and los extraditables with Escobar at the head. In July 2009, Vallejo testified in the reopened case of the assassination of presidential candidate Luis Carlos Galn which occurred on 18 August 1989 and signaled Alberto Santafimio as the key instigator of the candidate's assassination. She described how, in 1984 and 1985 and in her presence, Alberto Santafimio had repeatedly asked Pablo Escobar to eliminate Senator Galen before he could become the president and extradite him. Twenty-five years after the Palace of Justice massacre, on 9 June 2010 Judge Maria Stella Jara sentenced Colonel Alfonso Plazas of the Army to 30 years in prison for forced disappearance of the detained. President Uribe attacked the verdict on television and offered his protection to the military. The next week, with a European Human Rights Organization, Judge Jara had to flee Colombia and went into exile. After 18 years of delays and appeals, in 2007 Alberto Santafimio received a sentence of 24 years in prison for conspiracy with Pablo Escobar in the assassination of Luis Carlos Galn. Portrayals The romantic relationship between Virginia Vallejo and Pablo Escobar has inspired soap operas, serials, and movies, aired coast to coast in the United States and seen in many countries. All of them were fictional, and produced by two Colombian television channels owned by billionaires that Vallejo had mentioned in the memoir Loving Pablo, Hating Escobar, or co-produced with a cousin of President Juan Manuel Santos that Vallejo had accused of corruption. In her book, Columns and Interviews, 
to sensationalize the character Escobar. The scriptwriters fictionalized many historical events, ignored presidential corruption, and made derogatory or villainous portrayals of the journalist where the deep love and mutual respect between the couple are absent, together with Vallejo's elegance and sense of dignity in real life. The first was in El Capo, 2009, of Canal RCN of Colombia, owned by the family of Carlos Ardi Lale. It was co-produced by Fox Tele Colombia, and aired in the United States by Unimas. In 2010, the Colombian actress Marcela Mar plays the role of a middle-class reporter in love with a narco. The second was in Escobar, The Drug Lord. 2012, of Caracol Televisión, owned by the family of Julio Mario Santo Domingo. The Colombian actress Angie Cepeda plays the role Regina Parejo, a naive and elementary television presenter. The third was in the serial Narcos, 2015, of Netflix and Gormant, co-produced with Dynamo of Colombia, directed by a cousin of President Juan Manuel Santos called and that met the scriptwriters in their presidential palace. The Mexican actress Stephanie Sigmund plays the role Valeria Valez, an unscrupulous journalist and key supporter of Escobar's political ambitions that instigates crimes, and is finally killed by the Pepes. The fourth portrayal was in the movie Loving Pablo of Fernando Lenda Arana, where the Spanish actress Penelope Cruz played the role of Vallejo, while Javier Bardem played Escobar. It was produced by Millennium of Nevada and sponsored by the Colombian government. The film was launched during the 74th Venice International Film Festival, and the two leading actors were nominated for the Goya Awards of 2018. Rotten Tomatoes gave 2.5 stars to the film this year and many criticized the poor English accent of the leading Spanish actors, and it was tagged as frivolous and as the last soap opera about a legendary criminal, though the movie was inspired by Vallejo's best-selling book. The director and co-producers created an entire adaptation with fictional scenes and characters, like an agent of the D or an ex-husband plastic surgeon that never existed. In real life, Vallejo and Escobar met in 1982, when they were both 32 years old, and she never met any officers of the D until she arrived to Miami in 2006. She was never fired to be replaced by a younger presenter, or threatened her directors or anyone. She was not living in Colombia during Escobar's bombings and kidnappings, and she never visited Escobar in La Cathedral prison. In fact, Vallejo had ended her relationship with Escobar in 1987, never saw him again, and spent the following years in Germany. Journalists that had worked with Vallejo in Colombia could not understand why Cruz had changed completely the story to make such a derogatory portrayal of the author. In an interview, Bardem explained that the Colombian people had asked him not to glamorize Escobar, but Vallejo explained that behind her defamatory portrayals were not only the accusations she had made against members of the Colombian government and the Santos family, but also the millions of dollars that the television and movie producers had received from the government of Juan Manuel Santos. Calden, thanks to a cinema law that he had created in 2012 to promote Colombia as a touristic destination in Latin America, including Colombia, the title of the movie was changed to Escobar's Treason, possibly to distance Leon de Aranoa's fictional narrative from Vallejo's events described in Loving. Pablo, hating Escobar.